Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology. Today we'll be continuing the uh, Vietnam single missions with uh, Crusader's Kill, I believe. Oh. Yep, Crusader's Kill. Crusader's Kill, USS Hancock CVA-19. Date, June 12th, 1966. Local time, 1100 hours. Weather, cloud cover. Situation. F-4s were responsible for a majority of the air victories in the early part of the war. Over a year passed before an F-8 pilot shot down a MiG and claimed the first Crusader victory of the war. On June 12, 1966, Commander H.L. Marr and his wingman, Lieutenant Phil Vampatella, escorted a small force of A-4s raiding a barracks complex north of Haiphong. The strike force was returning to the carrier in low overcast conditions when Vampatella spied the four MiG-17s hustling to catch up to the Skyhawks. The F-8s turned to engage the MiGs and managed to split up their section. A few minutes of maneuvering followed, during which Marr took a number of snapshots at fleeing MiGs and fired one Sidewinder, all to no effect. Though unsuccessful, Marr's maneuvering forced one of the MiGs down into a small valley. Apparently low on fuel, the North Vietnamese pilot attempted to break off and head for home. Marr gave chase and, closing on the MiG, launched his second Sidewinder. The missile destroyed the MiG's tail and starboard wing, and the aircraft tumbled to the earth. Mission objective. You must destroy the assigned MiG-17s from the North Vietnamese section that's tailing you. Order of battle. Recommended aircraft F-8J. Recommended weapons AIM-9B. Threat suppression data. Ground opposition none. Air opposition MiG-17s. Now you'll notice on the map, there's no AWACS. Now that butler, destroyer, destroyer escort that's uh, performing the bright brown or radar picket mission is the one that's actually giving us um, information on uh, enemy aircraft and where they are relative to us. So that's why in that one mission, when the AWACS was shot down, we were still able to get that information because this ship was providing it. And he's a fixture on all the Vietnam missions because he's part of the map. Now you'll see the F-8 has four 20mm cannons with 350 rounds each. We have next to no weight to play with. This is like a late 50s vintage fighter, so it makes sense. Uh, we have four Sidewinder missiles and two small drop tanks. We have 10,000 pounds of internal fuel though. So that's uh, I think somewhat equivalent to the Phantoms. I forget exactly what it is, but I know whenever I'm, I was returning to the carrier, I always had at least 10,000 pounds in the bank. So. Um, or at least good on that, and, uh, uh, I don't know why it's letting us load anything we want, but we'll go with the default loadout, although it would be, uh, it should be a lot easier mission with the AIM-9X, but, yeah, we'll stick with the default, and we will launch. You see we're on the, uh, standby. We are on the Kitty Hawk again. And we have four F-8s on deck. So even though technically we're supposed to be on the Hancock, we're still on the Kitty Hawk. Because only the Kitty Hawk and Eisenhower are modeled in this game. And historically the F-8 pilots operated from smaller carriers like the Essex class and other carriers of World War II vintage because they were not they were not capable of operating or operating effectively the uh, four Phantoms, which were larger at the time and generated a lot more heat, so you needed better uh, jet blast effectors and all that sort of thing. Stuff. So, Crusader pilots operated primarily from the SX carriers. I imagine from the Midway carriers as well, although they, they may have operated the Phantoms. But I've, not possible to on that, but for sure the Forestals, the Kitty Hawk class, and the uh, the Enterprise all operated F4 families, almost exclusively, I believe. Now uh, F8s during this time period, uh, they actually did, they're known as the last gunfighter, but they got most of their kills with sidewinders. Actually, they only got four kills with their air-to-air -air cannons or with their their cold cannons. And that's because their cannons tend to jam during high G maneuvers, which this game doesn't model. But that's, even though they were known as last gunfighter, what they were really known for was being able to dogfight. They were trained in dogfighting techniques. The last pilots who were at the time, because the Air Force and the Navy believed that with the advent of missiles, 
beyond visual range combat would be the king of the airfield. And it turned out it wasn't, but between the unreliability of early model missiles and the restrictive rules of engagement in Vietnam, they ended up doing mostly the dogfighting and within visual range anyways. So what happened eventually after the war, you know, the pilots, real the Navy and the Air Force realized that the uh, Crusaders outperformed the Phantoms when it came to dogfighting. So the, the Navy established Top Gun, which is a school for, um, I think it's Navy Fighter Weapons and Tactics School or something like that. Basically Top Gun is just uh, a school for Navy pilots to learn dogfighting techniques. And it's what helps keep them one of the best pilots that you can find today. Likewise, the Air Force established Red Flag, which is an exercise which I believe also invites the Navy and Marines and other branches and even other militaries to join. And that's basically a multi week campaign out in the Nevada desert, simulating all sorts of things you would expect to find in a war against a near peer adversary, such as uh, special enemy air defenses. Uh, clearing the skies of enemy aircraft, electronic warfare, all that good stuff. So, uh, between Red Flag and Top Gun, U.S. pilots got back the edge that they lost in uh, after Korea to become known as one of the best pilots in the world again. Now, we are... Uh, we have a group of mechs here, but we know from the AWACS there's a group of mechs still parked at the airport. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to cue our wingmen to tie up these mechs where we can quick circle around to the field and then take out the mechs when they're still vulnerable. Yeah, these guys probably took off from that airfield ahead. Okay, so we'll distract that mech. Second make. Oh yeah. Got him. Let's get some health here. Let's go around Thank because you, there is there should be one more guy, right? That's why I was a little bit better. Let's hold them off, you two. We'll be there. Ah! And you couldn't hold them off. But we have that guy done for it. Woo! Almost ran into the control tower there. So we're going to try to make a pass at this big point one. Because he's probably our biggest threat. If we can take care of him, we'll have a much easier time with this mission. Then that other make 17 is going for us. So we'll let him do that. And then there's one make 17 left, I believe, that's heading to the A for us.
think that's the barracks complex you're supposed to hit. And make sure one's locking us up. They got him. All right. Thank you for the cover. Much appreciated since we lost him. So this mission was a historic in pretty much every way, but we took some pretty heavy damage, all things considered. We actually wouldn't want to fly this in the campaign because we have 41% damage, and with the uh, with the 10% damage that you get after every mission to reflect the need for constant maintenance, we'd be at 51% damage, which would leave us one man hour short of, uh, of what we would need to actually uh, fully repair our aircraft. So. Looks like these guys are in the holding pattern, or they're landing, so we'll let them do that first. We'll just kind of... Uh, We'll just let them uh, land, and that should hopefully give us the uh, mission complete too. Now the Crusader actually has a variable incidence wing, what this means is it can lift the front of its wings up by about 15 degrees, and uh, this allows it to generate more lift at low speed, low altitude, and I think they model this in the game, because I actually have problems getting this thing to glide. Uh, down onto the landing like you're supposed to be able to. But unfortunately, you, you don't get to see it in action in the game or have any control over the instance rate So we have uh, Sea Kings around. There's the A4. I think they're up in the clouds. I hope that's the last A4 going in for a while. So we can switch to navigation mode. Um, we're gonna throttle down to about 10%. And hopefully that'll be enough to uh call the ball. Let's see if we can uh, run off some speed. Four miles. Higher. Higher. 
Lower. Probably. There we go. I was gonna say we're just about Lower. to play anyways. We're uh. Lower. Uh, it's break Three up the game too much speed. Too much bang. Too much bang. Too much bang. Too much bang. On the ball. Lower. Lower. Two miles. Clear to land. So now we're cleared to land. Well, technically, the aircraft's still on the deck. With the two zero time. Lower. Two much back. So. One mile. Lower. Lower. There we go. Now our airspeed's finally getting. Lower. Point. Lower. 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 And. Air landing. Okay, that was a pretty decent landing, I think. Our mission's accomplished. Our wingman's dead, unfortunately, but. Sucks to be him. And, to be fair, we faced two additional MiG-17s that wasn't in, the, that wasn't there historically, as well as a MiG-21 that also wasn't there historically. So, yeah, that's it for uh, that mission. Debrief, USS Hancock, CVA-19, date June 12th, 1966, mission, Crusaders killed, resolution, success. After achieving the first Crusader air victory of the war, Commander Marr returned to the Hancock and treated himself to a victory flyby. You are going to. We took 41% of the damage, so instead, landed we killed four fighters, the other Crusaders took three, we are off, they were all gun kills, we managed to spoof all of the uh, enemy missiles. And in this game, your wingman dying generally isn't a big deal. The biggest effect is in the same mission where you will lose... You basically lose his ability to attack things, is what it amounts to. And you also lose the ability for enemies to split their attention, because some might go after him instead of you. Which, generally you can live without them. On some missions, though, it is critical that they survive at least long enough to dispense with all their ordnance against the targets you designate. And, I mean, generally, like, the mission after, you don't really get penalized for it, other than the fact that your record says all your wingmen died. Um, but... And on the next mission, you get what, however many wingmen they're going to assign you anyways. And at the skill level that they assign you as well. So you could lose all your wingmen in every mission, and other than the mission you lose them on, there's no effect on your wingmen in the next one. So, so that's it for this time, I think. Uh, next time we'll be continuing again with the uh, Vietnam single missions, and we'll see you then.